Today we're going to get to think about disparities of force and when our counter ambush would be more difficult. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Three lessons for you today, three distinct videos, all armed robberies out of Houston. MagTech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some MagTech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at luckygunner.com. On this first one, you're gonna see this woman come in and then a little while behind her, her male co-actor is gonna come in. They're gonna act like customers for a little while. And then you notice she's put a mask on and then she puts some stuff up there. The guy has put a mask on too, stupid. They've already come in the store and shown their faces. And he's gonna go right behind the counter and put her in a, a headlock. You know, he's gonna put her, it's, the description says a chokehold. It's a really crappy chokehold. But the female comes back behind the counter and shows a gun to the other clerk. So now our first, our male, is going to hold this woman kind of, sort of, around her shoulders as much as anything, but he's got her from behind. While the other, uh, you know, by, while the woman has the gun, which is kind of rare. It's rare that we see that kind of combination. And she is then going to start stuffing money from the till into her sweater uh, while she is threatening the clerk with a gun. And this is going to go on for just a little bit. Now, our male is going to bring over the other cashier and kind of, you know, like, like just, you know, tiny hobbit stepper over there. They're going to get the other one open. You're going to see, you see there that the female has the gun in her left hand now. She's transferred the gun over to her other hand while she is stuffing her bra with the money in the till. And they are going to continue to do that. Now, here at the very end, they're going to actually walk these two clerks into another section of the store, I think into the back of the store, to try to get into the safe as well. Thankfully, uh, after they got the money out of the tills, the uh, new story in the description, or it's actually a description from Houston PD, says that the perps fled and they're still looking for them, right? This one here, man, we have audio on this one. Watch these guys walk in with hoods and masks. Let's listen in. They end up back in their car and fleeing as well. Thankfully, nobody was hurt in that one. In our final one, this lady's in a, a apartment, you know, working office, and this dude's gonna walk in. Let's listen in on the audio for this one as well. He got literally nothing. She had no money in her wallet. There was no money in the office. Once he found that out, he left. You did hear, if you were paying attention, that he told her that he had a gun. So that one's pretty serious too. Thankfully, nobody was harmed. Let's think lessons. Seems like 10% of the comments in the channel are about my hair. And now, for the next couple of months, you actually get some say in whether I keep all of these curls. You guys know I've just been growing this as a joke and as having some fun. 
But for August and September, we are gonna do a fundraiser for SWAT Ministries, which is an incredible organization that rescues underage girls from sex slavery, helps abused and abandoned foster and adoptive kids, and they need help building a school and building a community, building facilities on land that they've recently purchased in Chiang Rai, Thailand, and this is your opportunity to help them. We actually have two buckets over on the Active Self Protection website. One that says, John, keep growing your hair, and one that says, cut that mop off. So if you're angry about this, you can do something about it by donating at the link in the description to the cut it off. And if you want to say, hey man, it's just hair, keep it, I think it looks good, donate over there. When we get to the ASP National Conference at the end of September, we will total up the total giving, give it over to SWAT Ministries, and whichever bucket has more dollars in it, we will do live here on YouTube, and we will do it for if, in front of everybody. If it needs to get shaved, it will get shaved. So listen, if you're tired of the hair, here's a chance to do good, and you get a say in it. So hit the link in the description, be a part of helping abused and abandoned children, and Tell me what's up with my hair. I continue to say that you absolutely have a red flag here. Now they walked in without masks on. Okay, fine. Hoods up's a little weird, especially in March in Houston. Doesn't, you know, that's not needed. But when she put her mask on after she walked in the store, huge red flag. You should know that bad things are coming. So if this clerk was paying attention there and sees, hey, you know what? They've just both put masks on and she was armed herself. Well then listen, she has, I think a, a case there that says, man, you know, they put on masks and he started coming around the counter. They had gloves on. You see he's got blue gloves on. And this is why paying attention to the right things matter. So we look at the eyes, we look at the hands, we look at the waist. And, and a part of the looking at the hands is considering the entire face. And a guy with his hood up and a mask on in 2023, that is not COVID protection. That is absolutely a prelude to an armed robbery, especially when he's got gloves on once I look at his hands, right? Now, uh, okay, now the lady rolls by here and she's got a gun in her hand. So this is not a joke, friends. And, and listen, when we have multiple attackers, at least one of which is armed with a gun, this is a very serious attack. Now, what is the second clerk going to do? Hey, either comply fully or resist fully. If you wanna go for that gun, take it away from her. You better have practiced that. I wouldn't recommend thinking about it for the very first time when you're doing it in real life. Now, the other lady here who is in kind of sort of what you might consider, you know, it's people, again, the description said it's a chokehold. It's really not a chokehold. He has her around the shoulders and he kind of has his hands clasped together around her. And listen, if you have some martial arts training, some standing grappling training, you can, you know, get around, turn into him and start raining hell on him if you know what you're doing. And now, of course, then you're in a fight with a guy who is bigger than you and stronger than you. But hopefully if you're trained, then you have the ability to do much more damage and cause much more pain to him than he does to you. He'll let you go pretty quick. Then you're at least in a standing fight. You can run out the door, get the hell out of there because you're in the danger zone. If you don't have any of those skills though, maybe you don't have that. He doesn't have her in a rear naked or anything like that. That would be an entirely different you know, set of problems to solve. Can you solve the problem of a standing rear naked? Yeah, you can if you know what you're doing. Again, this is my call to you, even if you're a firearms carrier, maybe especially if you're a firearms carrier, to get some time on the mats, to get your empty handed skills up because you will have them with you all the time and the more you train them, the more useful they are. But otherwise here, of course, hey, you know, a couple of things to think about when we see here from the perp that she has the gun in her left hand, that's probably not very deliverable from her in that particular case. And if you were the clerks and you were carrying a firearm discreetly concealed, maybe you're using deep carry with an enigma or something like that so a bad guy can't see it, very smart idea then uh, you can uh, launch a counter ambush here when she's not paying attention to you. Now, of course, you'd have to be far enough from the other bad guy to do so. So that's why when people say, well, when can I, man? Applying universal principles to individual situations can be quite difficult. So in terms of like, well, that translates to this exact thing for you. Now, I will say this as they are then saying, hey, give me all your stuff. The, these employees complied completely, ended up not getting hurt. That's good. Only about 25% of the time do, do compliant people get hurt in armed robberies but people who are armed and get off a shot only get hurt about 6% of the time. I will say this, that going to the back of the store, you know, everybody sets their own thing of what's their go signal, what's their time that like, I'm gonna fight no matter what, and you've gotta set yours. For me and for mine, I'm not gonna be taken to a second location, I'm not gonna be put on the ground and I'm not gonna be tied up. Those are mine, and I'm gonna fight no matter what at that point. Again, this is why I train, this is why I use empty-handed skills, why I carry less lethal tools, why I carry a firearm every day. 
you decide on yours. See again here, these guys show up with the masks on, with the hoods up at 6.45 in the morning, nothing good is happening. Now they show up and I wanna talk about the guy in the black and the red and, and he's banging on the glass to the, the enclosure in the enclosed area. Now I don't know if that enclosed area includes bulletproof glass. I think that glass though, if it won't stop a bullet, is not very helpful, right? So it's security theater otherwise. Now, will it? I don't know, man. That's a very expensive thing to have bulletproof glass. But hey, you can feign compliance. He's gonna have to come around to get in your door. You could feign compliance there and then get yourself into the fight as he comes around. He's gonna have to take his eyeballs off you to get around to the other side anyway. So again, know when the time is to launch your counter ambush. They should certainly have a firearm back there. And of course, I'd recommend on your person. So I'm mean, lose the, the visual contact there and then come around here and come to the door. Gotta be honest with you, man. If I'm in that kind of an enclosed area, I think the right thing to have behind the counter is a shotgun, for goodness sakes, properly loaded. The right answer here is double lot buck. And of course, you know, we recommend the good stuff. You can go over on the second channel in order to get kind of that information and education. And if so, you can put that buckshot right through that door. You can see through that door, you know where the bad guy is and you could put around, you, know, you put around a double odd in him. That's probably gonna change his behavior in a hurry. Now, of course, if that's bulletproof glass, mm, that may not happen, but I certainly wouldn't open that door, not, not come hell or high water. That's absolutely asinine. Now you might say, but wait a minute, John, there's another employee out there. I understand that, which is why I might put one through the door if that's, especially if it's an interior door. Now, I think this clerk does have opportunities here. You notice the guy put the gun on the counter, for goodness sakes. If that clerk is armed himself, only if it's on his person, really, this guy turned around, put the gun on the counter, you could have burned that guy to the ground all day, every day. And I almost guarantee you, if you did that, these other two guys are gonna run off because these guys are cowards. They're using their firearms as intimidation tools. And as soon as it's a risk to them, or as soon as their buddy starts leaking heavily from the blood loss from the bullets in him, they are gonna probably find something else to do with their day. In this case though, they complied fully, okay fine, shows that their security was simply security theater and wasn't useful at all. Last thing, of course, you know, the cops say they're looking for him, but they're not gonna find him. So again, the only time for actual good, like no joke stuff is for you. This last one, I really think the idea that I wanna talk about here is emotional fitness. You heard that woman start, start hyperventilating and, and just freaking out on this one. And instead, okay fine, you know, he had threatened her though that he had a gun, though he never showed it. That's not just a robbery, friends. That is using a weapon to intimidate or using the threat of a weapon to intimidate, so that's an aggravated robbery. And an aggravated or armed robbery, and I think that, again, on video, on the audio, you heard him say, I have a gun. So therefore, she has the right to believe that he does. He told me he did, he was taking my stuff, I believe that he did. So sneaking around the left side of that desk, absolutely wise, if you have a firearm on your person, lady's not in your purse. Notice he grabbed that out of her purse. She's not gonna be able to get to her purse. So getting it on your person, especially paramount in this particular case, she could absolutely have used that. But having some emotional fitness, the number one thing here, because you heard her hyperventilating and freaking out here and just locked up and not able to do anything. You gotta have emotional fitness to stay present in the moment to say, what do I need to do right now to make myself safer? I wish she had thought about this advance. I wish that she had found that opportunity because she had plenty of them to cover her asp.